this time last week we were joined by the golden couple of Steve Backshaw and Helen Glover, who were celebrating their first Easter as a married couple by rowing, or paddling, 125 miles in a kayak from Devizes to Westminster. Hopefully they were going to try and do this in 24 hours, they told us. Yeah, and from the start it looked like it might be up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> After six weeks of intensive training, race day has finally arrived, and the nerves are kicking in. I didn't sleep very well last night, which, which isn't a good thing when you're about to stay up for 24 hours. No, it's only back now. The enormity of what we're taking on has also hit home. It was pointed out to us that Sir Steve Redgrave, the greatest Olympian we've ever had, has tried and not succeeded. And that kind of makes you think, ah. Yeah. The 125-mile non-stop Devizes to Westminster race is considered to be the canoeist's Everest. With 157 pairs aiming to finish in 24 hours, each team chooses their own start time. You all good, hair spells? Mm -hmm. It's 10.15 and we're off. Thank you all very much. Look, we let ourselves <laughs> Anyone know which way London is? The first 52 miles are along the Kennet and Aden Canal. Then we hit the River Thames at Reading in Berkshire. It's a very, very long way, isn't it? One and a half miles in. <laughs> Only 123 and a half to go. There are plenty of obstacles to navigate, but some are friendlier than others. Okay, easy there, fella. Look, you just take the back of our boat. <laughs> we'll paddle over 135,000 strokes during the race, and it's my job to set the pace. I've got five miles and 54 and a half minutes there. At the moment, we're feeling strong and slightly ahead of schedule, so I don't want to stop for anything. Annoyingly, I need a pee already. If you want to go in the boat, you can go in the boat. I'm not getting in the boat already. I would love to give away the three minutes that we've just achieved. But it's not just kayaking we have to contend with. There are 77 lots where we have to get out, grab the boat, and run. Oh, it's nice to be out the boat. Yeah. You reckon you run it's a half marathon with a boat on your shoulders? This is also when our heroic support team feed us and give us water. Every hour we burn around 800 calories, so we need to eat on the go. You good, Harold? That is the right way. <laughs> but after just 13 locks and only four hours in, we have a major problem. Should we be okay with the boat? Somehow I've managed to splinter the entire back of the boat and my cockpit's almost coming off my hand as well. The constant battering while running has smashed up our boat. We'll have to paddle it stuck together with heavy duty tape. Both yours guys, both yours, go. We've still got 20 hours to go with a broken boat. It's completely split right across from one side to the other and then all the way back to the stern and my cockpit's nearly off. As the day ends, after 51 miles of relentless paddling, we take our only proper stop of the whole race. With every wasted second vital, the stopwatch is ticking as we tape up our sinking boat. Steve's parents have been waiting for us to arrive. His dad's cooked up a storm and his mum feeds us at it's top really speed. It's hot, so is it? I never thought my mother-in-law would be force-feeding me sausage rolls. As the sun sets, we rip off our soaking wet kit and prepare for the long night ahead. This is really important to stop and change now. Because once it gets dark, once it gets cold, it's going to be really, really cold. But we're not even halfway. And as the dreaded night paddle looms ahead of us, deep fatigue suddenly hits me. I don't know why I'm getting emotional, but I think I'm just... I think now we've stopped, I've realised how tired I am. Um, and I, I think maybe I just need to keep going. Thanks guys, that's amazing. Well done everyone. But night time is when most crews give up due to total exhaustion. The next few hours really test us to the limit. <laughs> Mentally I'm physically tough now. Injuries kick in. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hot and trying to hurt. A lot through my back and through my forearm. A quarter of the crews won't make it through the long night. Whether we do is anybody's guess.
Well, Steve and Helen will be joining us tomorrow where we'll see the final part of their epic journey. If you were watching last night, you may have seen Steve Batchel and Helen Glover crack their kayak on the gruelling first leg of their 125-mile race from Devizes to Westminster. Yes, wow. Did they sink or did they swim on the toughest section of the race? It's time for the dreaded night paddle. We've been paddling non-stop for the last 14 hours, racing down the Kennet and Avon Canal through Hungerford, Newbury and Reading. It's just gone midnight and we're now on the River Thames, passing through Marlow. Oh my God, is that Monday? Yeah, I'm hurting. We've got many hours of paddling in the pitch black ahead of us. Dawn is a long way away and we're still having to get out and run around every log. I'm meant to be able to visit the trap now. I'm in her, lost in my back and my forearm. And Steve announced to me that we're basically halfway down this, which is not fun. This is the graveyard ship, when exhaustion really kicks in. Overnight, a quarter of competitors will be forced to retire from the race. To stand any chance of finishing in less than 24 hours, we need to be at Teddington Lock at around 7am to coincide with high tide. Despite the pain, the chafing, and the blisters, we're both keeping positive. There's a nice kind of, I don't know, sensation of just being totally alone. It's lovely. So you're saying it's lovely, then here's your work, Tyler. Be right, Steve. No, 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 it's better without Be it. Be right. Yeah. I'm in a boat with a very drill instructor, for goodness sake. Even in the earlier hours of the morning, there are plenty of cheering supporters keeping our spirits high. And of course, we couldn't do it without our dedicated support crew who've been keeping us on schedule and trying to make sure we keep our energy levels up. Yeah, I'm showing fancy a donut. Uh, have, have a sandwich, yeah. yeah thank you. When do I ever turn down a donut? This, this is doing weird things to me. We've been battling to keep our boat afloat after putting a big hole in it just four hours in. It seems to be holding together, but I'm not so sure about Steve. He's got the world's worst case of nappy rash. I understand why babies cry now. It's even having a strange effect on me. I'm a bit disorientated in the dark as to where we are and what time it is. And I, I, I'm just doing this really annoying thing of I keep on calculating how far we've got to go and it's still in the hours and hours and hours. It's three o'clock in the morning. And I've got a boat that's held together with sticky tape. Yeah, it's great. The boat's holding together, but we're falling apart. We've been paddling relentlessly for nearly 20 hours, and fighting fatigue is now the real battle. Helen starts to hallucinate there's a boat tailing us, and starts shouting to us. They're a metre behind us, dude. Are they? Yeah. Is it right or left? There's no one behind us. Oh, f it was the moon, I thought it was the light. Right, which way? <laughs> After 108 miles, we reach Teddington Lock, on time to catch high tide. The tidal flow should help us on the home straight towards the finish line at Westminster. I can tell Steve is suffering, but the clock is ticking, and I know we need to push on. This is not the time for sympathy. The harder you go, the less you feel the pain, Steve. I am never, ever... <laughs> doing anything with you ever again. <laughs> Once on the Thames Tideway, we won't touch land until we finish. Any problems, and we're on our own. Oh no. What? Cramp. Where? My legs. But ticking off the bridges and the landmarks of London, Hammersmith, gives us the kick we need to drive us to the finish. Do I like to see the banner? <laughs> And just after Big Ben chimes nine o'clock on a glorious Easter Sunday morning, we do it. It's been such an honour doing this with you, sweetheart. Out of the 157 pairs that started the race, 120 finished. But for us, it was the cheers from supporters, friends and family along the way that really pushed us on. And we thank you all. Oh, my word. And a fast gap of Tim's bolt. <laughs>
Huge congratulations. Oh, amazing. I think everybody at home will want to know how's your nappy rash. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I've said you've been sitting in warm baths yeah, since. Pretty much. Oh, and Helen, I mean, you showed me your hands earlier on. Just can you hold them up to camera? Yeah, oh, that, no. that one's pretty bad. Just look at those. Mm. <laughs> I mean, how does that compare to those that you would get rolling? I thought I wouldn't get any because when you row, you do you toughen your hands yeah, up. It's but it's just, it just shows how different it is. It's a really different sport, different movement. So, uh, yeah, my hands weren't quite ready for it. And this started hurting probably two hours in. So with 20 hours of, of blistered hands, it wasn't nice. But the <gasps> yeah. yeah, there you go. Mind you, the <laughs> form that you were keeping in those shots, oh, even, tw you know, 24 hours in and still. That, I mean, that was only when the camera started. We're really racing. We really yeah. had to paddle it hard and had to keep our form. Otherwise, we weren't going to make the tide at Teddington, and we wouldn't have made it to the finish line. So. And it wasn't just your hands and your body that took a battery. You, you mine got a bit foggy as well. Yeah. Early but hours. so as you saw there, I thought for an hour I was convinced there was a boat behind us, and internally I was going, "Oh, they should just. Why didn't they overtake us? Why? Why are they just sat there? Why?" And then, and then I, I didn't know if, if, if the fork in the river was going left or right, so I sh started shouting at them, and Steve was going, who is she talking to? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And there was no yeah. one there. We were totally on our own. But, it, yeah, it, I mean, that was probably after 20, 21 hours of paddling. Wow. And you did so well. I mean, the crew as well, keeping everything going and filming, obviously it's going to take a bit of time out of your schedule as well. So you, you did, and you had the complications as well of the hole I in know, the boat. I know, Yeah, I mean, that was that was something that our support crew really helped with. I mean, they were so heroic. Yeah. Because I basically managed to stick my shoulder through the boat and crack the, all the way up the back of it. And, uh, they, yeah, they stuck it together with sticky tape. Because I thought oh, it came yeah. from this moment. Look, we've got this. What This swan that comes up. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen to the point. <laughs> oh. And I thought initially it might have come from that, and then if you're carrying it, and you well, never I was know. worried that Steve had hit it with a paddle, and so his whole natural career going yeah, down, yeah, the, yeah, down the yeah. bay hitting a swan with it, a paddle. But it's made of carbon chem, though. It'd have to be a yeah. pretty tough swan to get through that. <laughs> to know that. Yeah. But of course, there's a there's a, a real serious reason why you're doing this, Steve, and it's all about there this rainforest. There is, yes. Yeah, so we, we're raising money to buy a section of rainforest in Borneo that otherwise is going to be cut down, and people have been so unbelievably generous. Us. They've really got behind us. Last time I looked, we were at, uh, I think, £72,000, which is well on our way to our target. If we don't buy it, it'll be cut down. And all the animals that live there, the orangutans, the, the pygmy elephants, mm. the proboscis monkeys, will simply have nowhere to go. So it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to tangibly make a difference and save a part of the world that it is really on the edge. But people have been so generous that I think we're going to crack it. I'm sure Amazing. people will find out how to donate online. And you guys won the mixed doubles. Oh, and I didn't it. know that you knew that. And here's the, you haven't seen the trophy yet because it's been away being engraved. So we can hand it over now. We've put a bit of gaffer tape on the back. <laughs> <laughs> there we are.